Today has been the biggest demonstration the group's been seen for many a year and it shows how important the NHS is. This government plans over the next three years to cut another £22 billion from the National Health Service budget. If that goes ahead, we will spend less than any other European country as percentage of our gross domestic product. Part of the cuts will mean that one third of our accident and emergency departments around the country will either be downgraded or closed. We had three hospitals in Grimsby. We're now under the guise of one and the old bits are being ploughed down and sell off for development. We're under the same threat in Laos. They are either going to close our hospital entirely or close half of it and sell the other half off for development. We'll be left with just a glorified clinic. Our A&E got shut at night time last year in August. So currently we have to travel over 34 miles in an emergency at night time to get life-saving healthcare. I'm a mother of three children. I live on my own with my three kids and I don't drive. So if one of my children happens to, I don't know, fall down the stairs, uh, have a fit, an asthma attack, whatever, I can't get emergency healthcare in the night. When we get to Lincoln A&E, it's full and you can't get seen. My child was sat there last year, this was before the nighttime closure. We sat there for five hours and my child had suspected meningitis. Start calling out what it is, it's corruption. When you start digging and discover that, oh, you don't need those beds over there now, we've got that bit of hospital to sell. That's our public assets. And then you discover Jeremy Hunt owns a lot of NHS land now. Most hospitals are now owned and managed by Prop Co, a private company set up with one major shareholder, the Secretary of State. And right now, that's Jeremy Hunt. <laughs> The government has split the NHS into 44 bits called Sustainability and Transformation Partnerships. The Humber Coast and Vale so-called Sustainability and Transformation Plan is set to make 420 million pounds worth of NHS and social care cuts uh, by 2021. The STPs state quite clearly the plans for GPs are to have super hubs. You won't have your family doctor. They will know nothing of your history. They'll handle, I think it's up to 100,000 patients in one centre. The local doctor's panels are told to offer contracts to private providers first, and the Americans are waiting to get in. Already in this area, the sexual health clinics are run by Virgin. The 25,000 NHS workers from the European Union that we require. Some of those staff are already going home. My brother is a member of a local NHS doctor, uh, GPs, and two Romanians have already been sent home because their visas are up. Who's NHS? Who's NHS? I've been looking at the area here, and the one thing that screened out to me the most was a terminology called accountable care organisations. It actually comes from America. So that should be giving you major alarm bells straight away. What you see now with hospital trusts and CCGs and the, the levels of bureaucracy will come under one roof, but it will be one big private roof. 45,000 people of working age in America have died due to not being able to access or afford proper health care. And that gives them a 40% higher death risk than we do. And that's only of people of working age. The private sector is now bleeding our NHS white. Last year, £13 billion went from our NHS budget directed to the coffers of the private sector. And the biggest beneficiary was Richard Branson's Virgin Healthcare. We have a local hospital down the road that has been returned to special measures for the second time. They starve them of funds. They preside over the collapse and then they say that the only solution is privatisation. This is the MO that they used on shipbuilding, on mining, on the railways, the utilities and they will use it on the NHS. There are over 100 hospitals in the UK 
that are funded by PFI. St. Bart's Hospital is currently paying the sum of around £2 million a week in PFI interest. The original cost of building the 100 plus NHS hospitals was around £11.5 billion. The total cost of these schemes to the public purse will be over 80 billion by the time the PFIs are paid off. The buildings will still belong to the PFI companies and will be looking to start the contracts all over again. If you add to the cost of these PFIs, the cost of the PFIs in other services, such as education, roads, defence, you're talking of a PFI debt of around three hundred billion pounds. Is there any wonder that our public services are suffering? The total PFI debt is four times the budget deficit that is used to justify austerity. The austerity lie that we have to cut public spending so that the economy can recover is total rubbish. For every one pound of public money spent on the NHS, at least three pounds more circulate in the economy. And that generates more tax income and generates and creates a virtuous economic cycle. Austerity is not necessary. It's a political ideology being enforced upon us by the Tories. Social care should also be publicly funded. There's a million people that need help with either washing, dressing or getting out of bed that are having to struggle to do that themselves because they can't afford to pay privately. People are having to stay in hospital beds because they can't leave because they can't afford the care. Since the annual reduction to funds for the NHS and social care, 30,000 people may have died because of these cuts. We want to fund social care like the NHS is funded, through taxation. Read about how we can challenge the STPs. If we can prove it in one, all 44 can then quickly challenge and put a stop, throw a huge spanner in the works of this awful practice. We need a mass campaign of direct action, calling for the NHS to be completely renationalised for the reversal of all privatisation and outsources of facilities and for all PFI contracts to be terminated with immediate effect.